I, you know, one of the things um, I remember distinctly was one of the monks I liked the most, Monk De Ching. He uh, he said to me he was very handsome and very talented, and one of the local um, waitresses had developed a crush on him. And I think they'd start mm. they'd started like necking or something. And I don't think it'd gone far. Like, it, making out, yeah. Like making out, okay. Yeah. And uh, he was like, I feel like I'm a bad monk. <laughs> <laughs> I said, <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, but she's so cute. I think even the Buddha himself would make an exception for her. So they, there, there was a sense of kind of conflict between their, you know, the ideals of how they they yeah. were supposed to be, and then just the natural desires of a uh, eighteen, nineteen year old young man. Um, and so a lot of them uh, left the monastery about the age where you, you know, you get a girlfriend and you get serious, and and it that was that was considered perfect fine that if you could leave at any point so there was a lot of monks on the edge trying to decide if they wanted to be celibate their whole lives or you know they they wanted to you know date and have a family is there like a monk rum springer where you can <laughs> just just leave and just go live life wherever you want for a few years and then come back and they'll still accept you um they don't officially have that oh that's hilarious though um they uh uh, there were monks who did go out and got married um, and had kids and then it didn't work out and then ended up coming back. So you could come back mm. after you left. There was no like permanent ban if the first time it didn't work out. Um, so there were some monks with like, they wouldn't admit it, but you would hear rumors and then you'd realize, oh, they'd been married and had kids and got divorced and ended up back at the monastery. 